afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's that time of the month for another State of the Balance with me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda and Master of States of the Balances. For the month of September of the Year of Our Lord 2016, there's been no patch there since, well, August. No surprises there, and by the looks of it, the probably won't be at least for another month, if not two months, due to the tournament, which is going to end first in October because we hit the goals necessary for it, which is a bit unfortunate. Again, that probably will mean a much more delayed patch, so that's kind of a bit unfortunate, to put it mildly. The overall sort of state of the balance can sort of roughly be described as uh, still reasonably favoured for the Allies, whereas for the Germans, again, there are issues here and there. I mean, that's not so, of course, that's not things that could be buffed for the Allies, but again, we'll sort of get to that. And for the Americans, overall, not a lot has really changed. It's still pretty much three riflemen, mortar, steward at the moment, then full up the anti-tank guns, or whatever else you really need. BARs and the likes, Rangers for the most part don't factor in, and a few players will of course go for other doctrines, but primarily it is pretty much just heavy cavalry, armour, and tactical support. I mean, the meta is pretty much just sort of settled around that in a slightly stagnant manner. And most players will of course just go straight for heavy cavalry in the Pershing, not utilising Rangers or anything else in the doctrine. Which is usually one of the ways of telling, you know, some things are a bit off when they don't even bother with the infantry because the riflemen can carry the way for the most part once they get BARs. And that's all a bit the problem again. The Americans I think have gotten a bit too buffed overall, they got a bit too many good things, and overall there's sort of few key units sort of need some changes in that department. Obviously there's some stuff that could be buffed, for example, the M3 half check here, for example, could it will be better, and again, I do think it would offer something better than assault units, maybe some cavalry riflemen. That could be a sort of nice little change there, a bit of a twist. But I'm normal to look in the Americans. I think overall what they need to change is the veteran defeat there on them, sort of, you know, not make them more bulletproof. The problem is essentially once they hit veteran defeat, they sort of get a light cover bonus at all times. That's not how you encourage players to use tactics and you cover. That encourages players to blobs. So that one has to go replaceably, you know... Reduced uh, re reinforcement cost, for example, that would at least, you know, make them a bit more viable in the longer term that way, and so, you know, not punish players a lot for, you know, making small mistakes, but at the same time won't encourage them to just, you know, ignore tactics. So I think that would sort of be a good start. Secondly, they should nerf the mortar, specifically lower its accuracy a bit. The problem is, basically, it's a Wehrmacht mortar, except better, versus the Wehrmacht, who need it because they have the smallest army against forces usually with bigger forces. I mean, that's basically sort of the core of the issue. It's just wrong. So that basically needs to be changed. The veterans' one ability needs to be replaced with, say, something like white phosphorus. What certainly can't happen is it remains in its current state as is because it's just not good. And then, of course, the steward itself, also sort of a key unit again, I think, sort of one of the things that really just keeps the Americans sort of just rather dominant and slightly tired of state. Basically, I personally just, just cut down a lot on the anti-infantry, the AOE, the basically high damage versus infantry and possibly in a bit of the accuracy and then you know well switch it over towards the lieutenant tier that is move it from here to here swap the with the AA half track so it sort of can sort of help keep you know the platoon command post a bit more versus vehicles rather than just getting rolled over by two to twos and then give this one a bit more anti infantry but again make it sort of sort of more choice in role, but at the same time that would require this to be slightly more expensive since now it's over here so otherwise I mean they might things come a bit too got good in another department. Or they could just make the lieutenant a bit more expensive. Well, I mean, that's an option as well, just 10 more fuel once they get the steward. So that sort of largely sort of covers, I think, there for the most part with the Americans. I mean, it's basically the riflemen, the mortar, and the steward. I think there's sort of really three key overpowered units that I think overperform. I think the anti-tank, I know, has also been slightly overbuffed. Again, now has a higher rate of fire plus decent penetration. That's... Again, makes it a bit too good. I would suggest either lowering the penetration a bit again, or the rate of fire for that one. I mean, otherwise, some smaller changes to the doctrines make the airborne, so no air, well, P47 calling a bit more useful, but not too much. And maybe change up some of the other doctrines here there with some slight changes to unit callings and the likes. But beyond that, again, I think you just need sort of, you know, to get time or rein in some of the more important, well, again, oh, performing units, so the actors would consider using more of the other stuff rather than just go heavy cavalry straight into Pershing, because that's very much what's being enabled at the moment. For the Brits, we're sort of a bit the same situation here with the Americans. Again, they've sort of gotten a lot of buffs there, which again sort of encouraged them just to not use cover. Again, the British infantry section basically bets you to get what the riflemen get at veteran D3. That's what you'd call a bad idea. Again, doesn't encourage 
cover usage at all so that one needs to be cut down as well similar change there as what the americans get cost or reinforcement reduction not you know stand about in the bloody open as if they're your bulletproof stuff that's sort of a start there i think sort of for the british also part of me thinks maybe they should lower the effectiveness of the anti-tank in a bit i think it's a bit too easy for them just to sort of spam it a bit about them sort of just roll about as they want but then again that might be sort of more to do with the germans just lacking firepower Otherwise, I'd probably also suggest a small change to the tier 3, specifically make it more expensive. I mean, currently the British are sort of the ones that can sort of most quickly rush out a medium tank. Which means, you know, also in a sense, even if you sort of play well against them, outperform them, cut them off a lot of the resource, they can still, respectively, get out a medium tank still without much issue. Because, again, they got so few tiers, they're probably some of the least expensive tiers, and they don't really have to spend anyone to build them, meaning it can all happen very fast and efficiently. And that's all a bit the problem there's what well, I think with the British. It's all a bit too efficient, a bit too fast again for a faction supposedly all defensive. And again, with strong infantry, strong support weapons, really good emplacements. I mean, it doesn't quite add up. So I think that that cap needs to change there. And finally, as a brace, again, it's a lot of really you know, hated ability because it does make a lot of sense. And I think basically what needs to change is the duration of it. Move it from 30 seconds to 10 seconds. That way it's all, you know, oh dear. I'm in a spot of trouble, need to sort of quickly sort it out, but not, you know, the one I could just, you know, soak up a lot of damage for half a minute or whatever it, like. it lasts. I mean, it needs to be a lot shorter, because that way, you know, determined effort can break it, meaning you don't, just can't just, you know, set it up wherever you want. You actually need to be a bit more sensible about it, and even then a determined attack can also deal with it. And you can't just leave it there until you sort of finally get to done whatever else you're doing and sort of get back to it. I mean, really, the brace is just too long lasting and that's not really what i call frightfully good or again very tactical i mean again it's sort of the issue with the infantry sort of with the allies again too bloody durable beyond that i don't think there's much else i'd change with the brits just you know i mean they've got so much stuff they're not really utilizing again which indicates to me again there's just stuff that's too good which is you know basically telling them you don't have to bother exploring the rest of your commanders or doctrines in any way possible so again that could do with a bit of a fixing as well. And again, one of the core bits that, you know, reduce received action. I'll probably also do the same on the sappers as well a bit, to be honest. Who well, again also get some nasty bits. Then it's not uncommon to see them turn into piat blobs. So again, something there to make them less likely just run about in the bloody open would be good. As for the Soviets, I think they're sort of in a reasonably good state. The only things that might change would be slightly lowering the penetration of the F-26. I mean, it's too easily competing with the well, S-85 at the moment, which I suppose isn't really supposed to be it, so lowering the penetration there would be a bit good. Lowering the anti-infantry a bit of the T-70, so the AA half tech sort of has more of a role there specifically, because currently there's not really much reason to go for it over the T-70, which is a bit of an odd design decision, really, when you think about it, or balanced decision. Also, I'd probably lower the effectiveness of the Guardsmen just a bit. They're a bit too easy just to spam, so just deal out of a lot of damage, take on medium tanks head on, of course, again, that could be argued is because German medium tanks just don't really intimidate very much. And that's sort of, what I think, one of the bigger issues at the moment is sort of, I think, more and more about it. It's just their marked armor or Axis armor rule just doesn't really intimidate infantry an awful lot. I mean, just take a look at the Ostrand. But let's, you know, I mean, again, in terms of, you know, meta game again, for the Brits, it's very much mobile assault. Land mattresses for the Soviets, a lot of guards doctrines, got moat very popular, a few partisans. Shock rifles, still not so much there, but I mean, it sort of tends to follow those lines for the most part. And again, for the British, it'll be Cromwell spam, maybe a few comets. AECs, of course, also very popular. And for the Soviets, again, there's sort of variety. Some go for T-34s, 76s, some 85s, T-70s. We see IS-2s. So, I mean, again, I feel like the Soviets are, for the most part, in a good spot. They don't need to be sort of particularly buffed. I just think a few ne units need to be adjusted. Again, the Guardsmen, I think, are simply a bit too dominant, which is a bit of a problem. But again, I mean, they're a rule, I think, reasonably well balanced. Again, it's the British and the Americans, I think, that sort of have some elements that are rather overperforming, which is overall getting them lazy, which you don't think is ever a good thing. As for the Orbit Commando Vest, I mean, they're sort of struggling. I mean, it seems like for a large part they've forgotten about the Yakpans, but recently it seems like they're sort of remembering, oh, right, we got that one too. I mean, it's been a lot of fewer syndrome, straight play to King Tigers, getting beaten in the process. Scavenge, a lot of scavenge, ja Jaegers, Ostwins. Again, it's not really that clever either. But again, I mean, one of the problems with the Obercommanders at the moment is just the bad group headquarters is rubbish. The Kedneff is just too expensive for what little it does. 
and overall probably suggest the flak half track either getting buffed or just lower its cost to say like 35 fuel at which point it probably sort of more along its price level and can actually you know you know be worth getting maybe even two again that's also still a manpower investment of some size and I also still think the Orbital Commander Vest rather needs, you know, some uh, half-tracks or the regular kind of transport troops about reinforce them. Again, it would help sort of with the aggressive idea they're sort of supposed to, but, you know, represent. Also, the light infantry gun needs some bloody smokes. So they can actually lay down smokes. And again, for an aggressive faction, it makes no sense. They got, well, no smoke at all that can be sort of easily deployed that makes again zero sense again also just another thing that means the belt group headquarters is also the weaker of the two there compared to say mechanized regiment which all performs well but again it's interesting to see so few players go for it at the moment despite i think it's easily in the sort of the stronger one at the moment beyond that not so much else i think at the moment i think again if we can sort of rein in the americans with richer and extent i think we can sort of look at things much better there and again the overcomers again needs a few to sort of adjust it again flat half tracks light infantry guns with smoke and again i think if they could get a half track that would be uh, pretty damn neat as for the Wehrmacht, again the Wehrmacht sort of continues to struggle as it always has again it's still you know behind there compared to all the power creep the allies got tier 4 is still kind of rubbish i've seen so many players trying to make it work again and again and it just doesn't really perform I think overall the problem is the Panther just needs more damage. It needs to be able to handle both infantry and armor uh, much better than it does. And overall, I think German armor needs to be able to threaten infantry out there much better, which is one of the problems. Infantry can just sort of barrel straight at German armor while out in the open. And in that department, I think it's time we sort of take a look at the uh, company's one, which actually had a slight solution for that, which was, at least for the Stugs, pin them machine guns could suppress. And again, I mean... I think that would sort of be the solution again, you know, punish infantry just running straight in a beeline at a tank, suppress the bastards. Also would give more German armor incentive to flanktons again, they can sort of leverage the, have, well, suppression better that way. I think that would rule, well, work better if German armor rule had some light suppression capability in, in general, and considering in particular how much anti-tank the Allies now have. Anti-tank guns, bazookas, PTRS rubs can penetrate most medium armor, SM6s, SU5s, Jacksons, Fireflies. I mean, the list goes on, really. I mean, German armor, really, supposed to be, you know, good and all that, just doesn't have the punch to carry through anymore. Blitzkrieg is just there to get you out of trouble. Panzer Tuition as well. I mean, most of the stuff is just to get you out of trouble. It can't really, you know, leverage damage very well against the Allies. Again, I would say, you know, give them some suppression some way or the other. So again, there's some way of punishing allies, just making a bazooka or piet blob or whatever kind of blob straight at the tank. Because right now it's sort of getting a bit silly when again, I mean, guardsmen will just sort of run happily at a tank out in the open, utilizing no cover. Again, if Germany was do that, say against a Sherman or a Cromwell or anything like that, end up pretty poorly in most cases. So why allies should get away with it seems a bit peculiar to me. So again, suppression is one way. Obviously, and I'm also starting to think maybe just the other trick is for the Wehrmacht just sort of lose the whole Vecchi 2 gives more armor, do what the Overcome and Rest does, is just have them start up the up armored way. Stugs, Panzer Force, Panther, maybe lower the armor of the Panther then, but then also increase its, well, health, I mean, increase its damage, so it actually that way, you know, outperforms the Panzer Force generally, give it a bit better, and again, the suppression with the machine gun on top, which again would also then make the 17 munitions upgrade a bit more worth it for the tank. I mean, that way, Panthers, Panzer Force, Stugs all that way, could present a bit more effect on the enemy. And of course, they could then sort of make the Stug a bit more expensive, but obviously at the same time, it would be a bit more worth it. In particular, the armor bonus then sort of also was a bit more worth it then, which is one of the problems, actually. Stugs, Veteran 2 is kind of rubbish. But again, if they were to do that, I think overall Wehrmacht, again, would be a bit more competitive. Wehrmacht Tier 4 would also be a bit more frightening. And we'll also allow them to perhaps, you know, pull off some, you know, more actual flanking with a bit more effect, which again currently is a bit shabby. Wehrmacht half-track, I think, still needs some suppression as well. And something just a bit more added there. Just something again so they can threaten the Allies a bit more out in the open. And again, just prevent them from just, you know, beelining straight at them. Because again, I'm so used to seeing it. Oh, that's a tank. I mean, let's go straight at it. Wait, what? I mean, it, 
Again, yeah, no, again, it's supposed to be a tactical RTS, yet when again infantry doesn't have to worry about tanks, it gets a bit weird and awkward in that department. The offspring just needs a big fat buff. Again, it's just not reliable enough versus infantry. I mean, you come to point blank behind an anti-tank gun, it'll still take time to, you know, clear it out. T-70s, Centaurs, Stewards can all do that in seconds, but an Austrian, you know, takes longer to actually do that. And in several cases, more expensive and harder to get than any of those. So it's, it strikes me as pretty damn odd. And again, they're the smaller faction. Again, the one that sort of has units least easily wiped, or most easily wiped, so... Why are they the ones with the least damage capabilities as well in many cases? I mean, I think that's sort of where, somewhere, things have gone slightly wrong for the Wehrmacht. That just, the damage doesn't really follow suit with, again, their sort of vulnerability in many cases. They're really slow and inefficient teching compared to most other factions at the moment. And I would also argue at this point, maybe just to give them an elite infantry unit at tier 4. Because, again, they do follow the old Wehrmacht design to many degrees, but they sort of lack a lot of the vital elements, which do include, you know, the Knight's Cross Holder sort of as an element there. So, I mean, really, again, I think Wehrmacht is just in need of a serious overhaul on many levels. And, again, I also think Wehrmacht armor it needs a rethinking, because currently it sort of just gets outdone in many ways. Panthers by Comets, easily taken up by Fireflies, Tank Destroyers, doesn't have enough punch, Panzer Force by Shermans, Cromwells, the list goes on, Austrians by Centaurs, Light Tanks. Stooks is the only thing that sort of really stands out, but even then... It's not amazing in some ways. It can't really sort of carry the, all the way. So, I mean, something has to give there. Something, I feel, very much has to give. So, yeah. I mean, very much why stop sort of again, meta game again it's mostly tier 3 tigers infantry tier 2 skip has sort of worn off i mean it still works i think versus soviets and the british but the americans can just so easily lock it down thanks to just the rifle and again they're still fast steward so it's a lot harder there to pull off and it's sort of you know slightly waning off there most time it's kind of this maybe a sniper sort of help try and bleed them out but otherwise you know two to twos and then pants as quickly as humanly possible to deal with the americans or the soviets or whatever i mean the Armak meta game is slightly sort of Retracting again, it's not in a strong position. It's, you know, again, kind of weak. So I think that sort of covers here the state of the balance for September. Well, again, not so good for the Axis. But again, it's been sort of like that for quite some time. And there's just been no real serious response from Relic as of yet. I hope down the road, once the tournament is over, we can sort of see, you know, a greater, more concerted effort. Even you know, with Dawn of 4-3 being developed, which obviously will pull resources away from companies too. I still think, you know, it would be great if they at least make, you know, sort of a community effort, you know, sort of try and put something together. So hopefully, you know, make things, you know, a bit more interesting and fun again, a bit more diverse once more. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed the state of the balance here for September. I hope we can have some better news for October. Something more interesting going on there. At least some shake-up in the meta game as someone figures out something really cool and really clever. And of course, you know, if you do like what I do day after day, videos and so on there, do consider donating as it is what allows me to keep making videos. I mean, I do try to do this for a living, so I do, you know, kind of require donations. I do hate asking about it, but at the same time, I kind of got to ask for them. So just a quick note there, do consider donating. It is very much helpful. Links are in the video description. This is Imperial Lane signing off and see you another day for another exciting video. Cheers.